backcourt that you guys have right now rank among the backcourts you've had in your career coaching? Huh? That's good. I think what makes it good is they're really, really good people. And I think that uh, Four and Boots, uh, they enjoy slash brace, embrace uh, the pace and the intensity at which we work. And the older I get, uh, the more I appreciate the parents and the mentors and the coaches uh, from where players come from. I probably pay more attention to that than I should. But I have an incredible relationship with Four's mom and dad, incredible relationship with Boots, his dad, his stepmom, his mom. And so in 2023, regardless of what position you play, Coaching is different, and I think that the relationship with the adults sometimes is just as important as the relationship with the young adults, and they've been 1,000% supportive since both of those guys got on campus. Yeah, Coach, um, guys talked about rebounding, offensive rebounding, just how much the way you emphasize it, and you, you guys – Won that battle by 10 points tonight. Huge difference in the game. Mm. Um, talk about what it looked like tonight and why you emphasize it so much, obviously. I think our staff is, uh, in, in truth, we probably over-teach and over-coach rebounding on both sides of the ball. Um, we do an incredible amount of study in how we show clips, in the numbers that we analytically um, and as our program has evolved Dexter Dennis was a big part of that last year uh, he has changed our recruiting process in regards to how we even go about recruiting because of rebounding and there's so many things that are byproducts, whether it's tempo, whether it's free throw rate, whether it's rim shot percentage. There's so many things that we believe are byproducts of how we go about teaching rebounding. And we're trying to recruit to it, and it's a very high priority. We, you know, like, um, Offense, defense, special teams. Um, we've assigned a coach within the organization. One's the offensive coordinator, one's the defensive coordinator, one's the special teams coordinator, and one's the rebounding coordinator. And so we've 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 turned it into a literally a category um, in our prep, in our practice itineraries. And so I, I I do think that tonight that was a big part of us having a chance. Yeah, and last thing with that, guys got to be motivated to want to go do it. How do you get them to want to go do it? I, 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 this, this probably sounds condescending, and I, I'm not trying to say it in that regard. Um, we, we just try to weave it into the fabric of everything that we do. Um, I, I don't know necessarily how to say this without acting like a coach, but um, – Here's the pie chart of what we do in practice, and we're going to um, give a very high percentage to what we do in just rebounding because it happens on both ends. So tonight, I, I told our guys that tonight, um, I'll probably skew the numbers because I'm worn out. Against Oakland, there were 72 rebound opportunities in that game. Against Dayton, there were 86 rebound opportunities in that game. And I told our guys that the line on that tonight was going to be 82. And it ended up being 80. And so um, two day before prep and practice, one day before prep and practice, day of the game shoot around, the attention that we give to it in the locker room and in film sessions, uh, it's just a – it's a it's woven into everything that we do. 
Uh, Ohio State didn't shoot the ball very well from three. I, I wondered, did you like what you forced them into shooting? Uh, and how did you feel you um, guarded them on the perimeter? I think two is hard to guard, like really hard to guard. I think four is ultra fast. Obviously, we've played him in a scrimmage against Baylor when he was at Baylor. Number 10 on the touch, it's a basket. I think their perimeter is really, really difficult to guard. I actually told our guys that I thought tonight they would shoot 29 threes. Um, against Dayton and against Oakland, they shot more threes than they did tonight. And I think some of that was they had such success attacking us off penetration. And we did a really poor job in that regard. But I, I think two was probably the, the catalyst of that. He just, he's just a hard guard. Uh, he was literally responsible for 50% of their baskets. That doesn't count that he made 60% of their free throws. He's just a hard guard. Anything else for Buzz? length. Yeah, you can speak on first. Um, I just think later on in the game, we got more locked in with each other. Um, we did a lot more talking um, in the second half. And I think that's what allowed us to um, come together and pull out the W. I would say um, for most of the game, we controlled the glass. I thought the last couple mm -hmm. possessions we weren't able to do it as well. But I think our defense kind of overwhelmed them. I think our physicality towards the end overwhelmed them. And I think it's something that we kind of harped on all week. Um, we know they were a f physical team. We had to match their uh, physicality and intensity. I think towards the end, we were able to do it on the offensive end. Guys were able to get downhill, um, offensive rebound at a high level. So uh, I think our physicality kind of overwhelmed them towards the end. Henry, what allowed you to kind of take over there at the end of the first half inside? <clears throat> uh, f uh, credit to Boots and Four and and age and Jace, those guys when they came off the ball screens, they were drawing two defenders and were able to draw those two guys out and able to kind of give me free shots around the rim. I really just had to finish it. Um, credit to those guys, but um, it was something we worked on all week. We knew they were going to down on the sides um, and the short roll was going to be open. Um, they did an unbelievable job taking away shooters. Um, so I think we just had to finish over their length and um, play around the rim. And then Tyrese, what was it like going up against Bruce Thornton, number two for us? Uh, he's a um, he's a good player. Um, he's a uh, he leads their team. He made the, the right plays. Um, and he's a competitor at the end of the day. Um, that's what kept them in the game. He made the right plays. So um, I think that's his team. Uh, when you guys get a couple early putbacks, and you sort of get that feeling like we can hit the boards tonight and do something with that. What's that do to what's that do do to you guys energy wise and like is that a, something you just feed on how do how would you do that well one hundred percent I think that's what when coach came to college station that's one of the things he's harped on this whole time here how can we be on the offensive glass how can we be um, great on the defensive glass and I think offensively um, we just kind of overwhelm them with our physicality um, even our guards are able to get down there and, and um, you know, do do things that help and help impact winning. Um, but yeah, when we see the first couple uh, guys kind of go down there, I think it just motivates the whole team, and not just guys who are playing, but even guys on the bench. It, you know, hypes them up, even uh, our coaches. So I think it's just kind of our culture and what coaches created. You guys were a great offensive rebounding team last year too, and nineteen to nine second advantage and second chance points in this game. Just what does it take to be a great offensive rebounding team in that culture that you know your coach has established? I would say, um, I mean, we do bubble drill. You just put a bubble on the rim, and there's no makes. And so it's kind of man on man, and you know, you kind of got to be tough. And it's not like there's, it's, you know, having a five man go against another five man. No, it's a, Everybody. it's a point guard going against a five, and he, that point guard's got to find a way. Way's got to go against Wildens, and he's got to find a way to box Wildens out and get that rebound. And so mm -hmm. I think it's just a culture, and it. it it's a compounding effect over time. You know, if you do something every day, it builds and builds, and it becomes um, not just a habit, but your instinct. And so, I think that's just our instinct and what we are. Once that ball is on the rise, we're going to get going to get it and go after it. 
for both of you guys. What does it say about your offense that you can get three guys scoring 20 points or more in a game, especially when it's on the road against a Power 5 school? Um, I just think it's a part of um, our coaches and how they recruit uh, any given night. Anybody from the starters to anybody on the bench can go off. Uh, you just never know. Um, and feeding off the uh, rebounding or just believing in one, one another and um, just playing through each other, I think that gives or uh, that feeds um, us to have that type of energy to just believe in one another. Yeah, I think everybody just has confidence when they come mm -hmm. into the game. I think Coach has done an unbelievable job this year. People knowing their roles and people have, you know, no, no, they know the roles early in the year. This is our second game, and I think that's a big part of our success kind of early right now and what we're doing. We have a lot of stuff to keep keep doing and to build on, but I think um, people knowing their roles and people playing with just uh, ultra confidence has really helped this team. Was there a point in the game where you could feel that you were wearing them down the way that you were able to get to the glass and the way you were able to dictate some of the pace of the game? Could you feel that uh, at any specific point in the game? Uh, I would say no. I think, you know, what Coach Holman does and, and his team, his team's never quit. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he has an, Ohio State has an unbelievable culture on, on their end. Uh, I know Coach Diebler and, and his success on the offensive end, um, I think, you know, they're, they're a really well-coached team. They don't give up. And so I don't think there was at any point uh, that we were, you know, well, we got them now. Um, but, um, they're, you know, they're a really well-coached team and those guys fight. You guys, there was a there's a stretch of about five six minutes in the second half where you were really going bucket for bucket with them, just exchanging baskets. It never got farther than like a two point game, and it really felt like whichever team here can like string together consecutive baskets is probably going to pull away. What about your group gives you confidence that like you were going to be the ones in this game to eventually pull away when it was looking like that back and forth? Um, I just think having that confidence in each other that. Um, <laughs> That my teammate go do, don't going to make the right play, going to do the right things, um, and then again at practice, um, we hoop at practice. You know, we have turkey game when the turkey game one time it went for like 30 minutes because we was going bucket for bucket. So it wasn't our first time being in that situation. Um, and credit to them too because they kept hooping and um, and we was just going bucket for bucket as you say. Um, unfortunately, we was able to um, pull out the win. Thank you guys.